Hello, my darlings, and welcome. Samhain, also known as All Hallows' Eve and Halloween, is the first day of the new year on the wheel of the year, as well as the third harvest. It's celebrated on October 31st. Here are some ways to celebrate the season. Let's do some magical crafting. There are a number of ways you can celebrate the season or day. Please feel free to use the suggestions that resonate with you and that work best with your space and your schedule. As always, you can take some of these ideas and customize them to fit your traditions and practices. You can celebrate the day or the season in general in the weeks leading up to and following the holiday. Welcome to Samhain. The days are getting cold and it's the time of the third harvest. The focus is on making ready for the leaner times and the changing of the seasons from autumn to winter. On the wheel of the year, October 31st, Samhain Eve is New Year's Eve and November 1st is the first day of the new year. Samhain also coincides with the Day of the Dead and All Saints Day and All Souls Day. If you would like to have a religious celebration and honor the gods and goddesses, there are several deities that relate strongly to this time of year. The Celtic goddess most closely associated with the Samhain celebration is the Morrigan. She's the Irish goddess of death and destiny, appearing before great battles as the goddess of fate. The Morrigan is a shapeshifter who takes many forms. She often appears as a maiden, a warrior queen, a crone, and a raven. She is the keeper of fate and a purveyor of prophecy. The Norse goddess Skadi is a giantess who is linked to both winter and death and is said to reside where the snow and ice never melts and where darkness lingers. A bow hunter, Skadi is also closely associated with hunting, dark magic, and the new moon. Hecate is an ancient Greek goddess who is difficult to define. Originally, she was a protector of the home, and in that role, she was worshipped by much of the ancient Greek world, as nearly every home would have had a shrine or altar to her in front of the doorway. She protected homes against illness, enemies, and other types of evil, and these altars became known as Hecatea. Eventually, Hecate came to be known as the goddess of liminal spaces such as doorways and thresholds. She's a guardian of pathways and of traveling, especially the travel of souls from life into the underworld. She is also known as the goddess of night and boundaries, crossroads and witchcraft. From the earliest times, she has been associated with powerful magic and curses. She is the goddess of the new moon and most particularly the darkest night of the month. On Hecate's night, she frees the souls of the unjustly killed, and thus she is associated with justice. Hecate is invoked when justice is not forthcoming from other channels. During this season, you may wish to honor your ancestors or set up an ancestor altar. The ancestors you choose to include are up to you. Often included are blood ancestors, close family members, or direct descendants. If you don't know your family or if you're not connected to them, you may wish to honor spiritual ancestors, those who you may not be tied to by blood or marriage, but who you claim as family nonetheless. Some witches, like myself, also like to honor cultural icons on an ancestor altar because of their influence and importance in the witch's life or even past pets who were important family members in their own right. Once you have everything on your shrine that represents your ancestors, consider adding candles, spiritual symbols, and other appropriate decor. I like to add symbols of death as a memento mori, an artistic or symbolic reminder of the inevitability of death. 
Memento mori is a Latin phrase that translates, Remember, you must die. Another focus can be an offering. You can leave food offering or beverages. It's important to keep these items fresh. Focus on food and beverages that they appreciated in life. You may wish to set a place for an ancestor at your table so that they can partake of a meal with the family. You may light candles in their memory or speak their name out loud and express well wishes to ask for guidance and thank them for being part of your life or lineage. At this time of year, the veil is at its thinnest and spirits may be present in your sacred spaces and circles. But have no fear, for tonight is a perfect time to commune with them. Ask your ancestors or spirit guides for messages when the veil is thinnest between our world and the spirit and fairy realms. You may wish to have a ritual to speak with the spirits or prepare a list of questions for Halloween night. You may wish to use a pendulum and spirit board to receive answers from your guides. You can also perform any other divination rituals you are familiar with or prefer, such as throwing bones, consulting runes, stones, or cards. There are many options, such as fire gazing, crystal gazing, tea leaf reading, automatic writing, and more. Lean into whichever method of divination speaks to you. This time of year is also a good time for personal reflection. Consider where you may have strayed from your path this year. I like to look at where I may have lost focus and ask myself if I'm achieving my goals both personal and spiritual. This time of the year is a time of self-examination and as you move towards winter, you can take action to get back on the path that you want to walk. Renew your commitment to your goals and make resolutions for the new year. Samhain is a witch's New Year's Eve, and November 1st is New Year's Day, as the wheel of the year begins anew with our journey toward winter and Yuletide. If you enjoy working with tarot, Lenormand cards, or oracle cards, you may wish to create a New Year's Eve card spread for the year ahead. I've created a printable worksheet for my patrons of the tarot spread that I use. If you'd like to download a PDF of this worksheet, please visit Magical Crafting on Patreon at the link below the video. My patrons can download recipes, book of shadows pages, artwork, and more, all provided as PDFs, and I'll continue to add new, downloadable content as I do more projects on the channel. My New Year's spread focuses on 11 elements looking ahead into the new year. I always start with the present situation and then ask about positive and negative influences coming in the new year. Then I focus on goals and lessons. Next, I ask about relationships, work, health, and spirituality. And finally, I look at what to work on or improve in the coming year and ask for a final message or piece of advice. Another way to celebrate Samhain is to feature the foods of the season, carrots, leeks, parsnips, and turnips, also pumpkins and winter squashes, cabbage, celery, and lettuce and kale, cranberries, apples, berries and grapes, plums, and pears. Apple bobbing is still a popular tradition at this time of year, and it heralds all the way back from ancient Roman times and the worship of the goddess Pomona. Pomona is the Roman goddess of fruiting trees and orchards. The Romans brought this practice to the Celts. It was believed that the first successful apple bobber would be the next person to get married. If you got the apple on the first try, you would find true love. However, if it took several tries, you would be fickle in love. Some young women would also place an apple under their pillow in order to reveal their future husband in their dreams. Whether or not you believe in any of these superstitions, apple bobbing can be a fun activity at Samhain. 
This is the third harvest and time to look toward winter. You may wish to put non-perishable foods aside for winter and do the last of any canning you've planned for the year. You may also wish to prepare a special or ritual meal focusing on the fruits and vegetables of the season. Include a loaf of bread to celebrate the last of the grain being brought in and a cup of apple cider or wine. And if you eat meat, you may wish to prepare wild game at this time. You might want to set the dinner table with candles and seasonal decor and consider your dining table a sacred space when you eat your meal. Or if it's warm enough, you may wish to enjoy a meal outdoors in nature before it becomes too cold to do so. If you would like to honor your beloved dead during the meal, place an empty chair at the head of the table and offerings of food for those ancestors who might wish to join you. You may wish to read out a list of names of the honored dead and ask each person invited to the dinner to share stories with one another, drawing comfort from the telling and remembering those who have passed on. One of my favorite foods to focus on during the season is the pumpkin and other winter squashes. If you are a kitchen witch or just love to cook, there's so much you can do with these vegetables and no portion of them have to go to waste if you're creative. As the days get colder, a warm bowl of butter squash soup or pumpkin soup is a perfect way to warm up. I love simple recipes with only a few ingredients that allow the pumpkin flavor to shine through. Roasted and seasoned pumpkin seeds are the perfect and snack and a perfect way to use all the parts of the vegetable. I like to add olive oil, salt, garlic powder, and Parmesan cheese to my pumpkin seeds and bake them for a very lucky 13 minutes on a cookie sheet. Roasted pumpkin makes the perfect vegan or vegetarian meal. Simple roasted pumpkin is flavorful and filling enough to serve as a main dish or as a side dish with other seasonal vegetables if you prefer. I like to roast mine with salt and garlic powder and serve it with crumbled cheese and herbs for a savory treat. But the spices can be varied to suit your taste and you can even use sugar and cinnamon for a sweet version. Another sweet treat for the season is pumpkin bread and you can add nuts or even chocolate chips depending on your preference. These can also be made in a muffin tin to make them easy to share. I will link my pumpkin bread recipe below this video. And of course, we can't forget to carve the pumpkins. The practice of decorating jack-o'-lanterns originated in Ireland where large turnips and potatoes served as the early jack-o'-lanterns of Samhain Eve to distract wandering spirits from settling into their homes and farms Celts once carved faces onto turnips and set candles inside. This was a rudimentary form of today's pumpkin carvings. Turnip lanterns lined roadways to light the way and also caution passing spirits. Carving pumpkins became popular in America where these large squashes were plentiful. Samhain marks the end of the harvest season, heralds the beginning of winter, the dark half of the year, and honors death. You may wish to honor the season by decorating your home or altar or sacred spaces with seasonal decor. The leaves have fallen and most are on the ground. This is a time when the earth is going dark. So reflect the colors of late autumn in your altar decorations. Black and orange are very popular. You may also wish to use rich, deep colors like purples, burgundies, and black as well as harvest shades like gold and orange. Cover your altar with dark cloth, welcoming the darker nights. Add candles in deep rich colors or consider adding an ethereal contrasting touch with white or silver. Samhain is the time of the dying of the crops and of life itself. Add skulls, skeletons, grave rubbings, or ghosts to your altar. Dust itself is often portrayed carrying a scythe, so if you've got one of those handy, you can display that on your altar as well. Samhain is also the one night of the year when the veil is at its thinnest, a day when fairies are afoot making mischief, spirits are roaming, 
and anything is possible. The veil is thin and otherworldly beings can reach our world much more easily on the nights of Samhain and Beltane than any other times of the year. If you would like to work with the Fae or spirits, you may wish to set a place at the table for them. Invite them into your sacred space and ceremony, or leave offerings of candy or cakes to entice them. It's also said that lighting a candle in a western window or doorway will bring the Fae. You may wish to light a bonfire to celebrate the season. The origin of Halloween comes from the dark nights of the ancient Celtic festival of summer's end, when people would light bonfires and wear costumes to ward off roaming ghosts. And so this holiday centers around fires and candles, thought to light the way for the spirits of the dead. You may wish to build a fire in a fireplace or a fire pit or even gaze at candle flames. Spend time meditating on your beloved dead, using your inner hearing and inner vision to connect with them. Fire is a naturally meditative tool. Gazing at a flame may help you relax and move within. This time of year is favorable for accessing sacred liminal spaces and moving through the thresholds between physical and spiritual. You may find that you can use the mesmerizing dancing of flames, its changing colors and shapes, and the comfort of the fire's warmth in your meditative process. Try fire gazing or meditation when you wish to purposefully move into the sacred liminal spaces where communication with spirit can more easily occur. I hope this video has given you some ideas on how to celebrate the season. No matter how you celebrate, I hope you all have a blessed Samhain season filled with communion and new pathways. May the gods and goddesses of this dark season bring you powerful magic and guidance and have a blessed Samhain.